Do you believe in psychics? What about the ability to predict the future? We can all predict the future a little bit. We all know that it's going to be colder in the wintertime. But how great are our powers of prediction, really? We all know that traffic might be a little bit slower if it's raining outside. But do you really know how many people are going to get hurt? Do you really know how many car accidents there's going to be? And how many of these people are going to need to go to the hospital? And how many people need to be at the hospital to help them? Well, at first glance, no. We can make educated guesses, but there's bound to be errors. And when you start to add up these errors across New Zealand's 220 hospitals and $17 billion annual healthcare budget, there's major environmental, social, and economic impacts. Despite all the wonders of modern medicine, the ability to predict hospital staffing needs continues to elude us. In order to take all of those variables and make an accurate prediction, you'd need a psychic. Well, let's meet that psychic. Introducing artificial neural networks. This is a type of computer learning algorithm. Conceptually speaking, it's a series of nodes with connections. These nodes fall into three categories. Those that accept inputs, those that create outputs, and some hidden layers in between. Using the example, let's say a neural network has the task of deciding whether a photo is a dog, a cat, or a turtle. Sensible inputs for this might be, is it furry, and does it hiss? These inputs become, in the example of a cat, yes or no options. Then in the hidden layer, each node takes these inputs and makes a simple choice. These choices are added together, and an output is reached, cat. In another example, let's say it gets something like this. It's not furry, but it does hiss. Each of the hidden nodes makes its choice. It's more likely to be a turtle because it's not furry. It's more likely to be a cat because it hisses. But let's say in this middle node, it makes a mistake and it says that it's more likely to be a turtle because it's not furry. This is how networks learn. They go through a training period where they receive feedback. So it takes this feedback, it finds the choice that was mistaken, and then it reevaluates the inputs that led to that choice. If in this case, hissing was more important to reaching the right final conclusion, then it weighs that choice more heavily so the next time that it gets this problem, it can reach the correct solution. Run it through a few thousand training runs, and you get something that's almost never wrong. Going back to our original problem, our outputs might be something like 10 nurses, 20 nurses, 30 nurses. And the inputs might become things like, is it raining? Isn't it, is it flu season? If you add more and more nodes, more and more inputs, and you run it against historical data, then you start to develop a really useful prediction tool. Compared to traditional statistical models that are only 80% accurate, artificial neural networks have an accuracy between 90 and 95%. So not only are they more accurate, but they can predict up to three months in advance. So in a hospital setting, in application, this means that you could create a roster three months in advance, and then on the day, reevaluate the predicted arrivals, and if there's a large number, interventions can be taken to free up bed space, like rescheduling elective procedures or moving patients to different wards. This allows healthcare providers to efficiently meet the demand for services, but it's not without limitations. Formatting medical data into a usable set of inputs is a major challenge. It requires a large initial cost for implementation. There's a large security risk associated with housing all medical data in one platform. And of course, some things can't be predicted. But even when you take all of these limitations and weigh them against the benefits, the benefits far, far outweigh the risks. In Queensland hospitals, they implemented neural networks in 30 hospitals, and there's consistently been a savings of $2.5 million per year per hospital. If you multiply this by New Zealand's 220 hospitals, you're talking about nearly half a billion dollars in savings every year. But hospitals aren't about money. They're about the people. Of that $2.5 million, only about 3% was from increases in efficiency. All the rest comes from better patient outcomes. This ranges from 20% reduced wait times to shorter hospital stays to reduced mortality. It's better for the staff, too. A huge problem in New Zealand is that the average junior doctor works a 72-hour week. A huge reason this occurs is that in order to hire enough staff to create a 60-hour week, would cost an average hospital $1.3 million a year. But with the aforementioned savings, a hospital could re 
invest money into this, hire enough staff to make safe working hours, and still have cash to spare. Should a hospital choose to reinvest their money this way, they'd see a 26% decrease in errors, as evidenced by American hospitals who've done just this. Environmentally speaking, healthcare in New Zealand accounts for between 3 and 8% of carbon emissions. In German hospitals, they've used artificial neural networks to close wards when they're not needed, and they've been able to reduce emissions by 15%. This equates to 54,000 tons of carbon a year. Perhaps one of the most um, lucrative benefits of this system is that major medical events can be predicted and even prevented. In the UK, in 2017, uh, Outbreaks of pulmonary disease were predicted with an artificial neural network and were able to be treated proactively and saw a, re reduce, uh, <laughs> saw a decrease in morbidity. So there you have it. Implementing artificial neural networks in New Zealand hospitals will not only save lives, but it will prevent illness, prevent mistakes, improve working hours, save millions of dollars, and reduce emissions.